Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Brian James, and this is mainly about my cars, my hobby, my Chevrons. So what we're going to do is just today go over a few things that I've done during the week, what I've received during the week, and what I'm going to be doing next week. So what I hope to do is end up giving you a weekly update on the car as it slowly progresses, and you can follow it as it gets built. So what we'll do starting now is just go over what I did this week and basically what I did this week was the mags and tyres. Now in New Zealand we have to follow a code of compliance. So what we have is a book. This is the Hobby Car Technical Manual. It's put out by the Low Volume Vehicle Technical Association. Now this gives you all the information that you will need when you are building a car in New Zealand for it to be able to pass its certification and get what we call a warrant of fitness. That's someone to tell you that your car is safe on the road. So although my car was built in 1987 and falls before these rules and regs were applied, I'm using this as my main base to keep the car safe. So in here it states that wheel spaces these are the wheel spaces I made, can only go up to a maximum of 20 millimetres. Now they have to be either hub concentric or wheel concentric, meaning that they need to either bolt to the hub or the wheel. Also, if they're bolting to the wheel, now this one's just a blank, I haven't machined it yet. You machine it down, you can see here I've marked it, so it is concentric with the mag wheel as it slots up into the mag wheel. So it has always remained running true with the mag. Sorry, wrong side, there we go. Also, what I've done, as we look, is these have been bolted onto the mag. Now these mags had multiple lugs for five and four stud. So I used a spear lug that was for the five stud, as these are only a four stud wheel, and have been bolted into that. On top of that, I've bought extra long wheel nuts. As we put it through here, you can see that it almost comes all the way through. Once again, this is to give the wheel nut full thread grip or length when bolting the mag wheel up onto the car. So it's all about remaining safe. On top of that, these are a 13 inch mag. So I specifically went for an old school looking mag because I think it suits the car. On top of, with that being said, I didn't want to go for a, a, a big mag, say a 17 inch, like what's on the little white car, because I wanted a bit of sidewall for comfort. This actually provides a bit of suspension, the sidewall. The car's extremely light. It's just on 500 kgs and so that means that with the little motor I don't need a lot of power but if I had a fatter tyre on the road it has a habit of being able to aquaplane in the wet so I specifically chose a 175 70 13 so it has the ability to cut through the water on, on such a light car. That's why I haven't gone for big tyres. There's reasons behind everything. So when I got these mags, they were corroded and quite frankly they were really horrible. So I took them back with some sandpaper and we've got a polishing machine at work. So once I got them back to a point where I could put them on the polishing machine, I polished them and then redid all the black painted the red, red black with a hammerite paint. And I think they come up quite well. So that was the front and rear. Got the tyres fitted yesterday. And they're all on. And I think it looks quite good. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. What did I receive in the mail? Well, yeah. we got some LED headlights. Now I've seen these on a few cars and they look spectacular so you've got a daylight running ring so that outer ring there that just that's white 
all the time the car's on. If you need to indicate, if you're indicating turning left or right, that'll glow as an indicator and flash in orange. Uh, once again, they're um, quite a hard shell. They're LED, they produce a good light. It's all about being seen. So I, needed, I wanted the running daylights to be able to be more seen in the car. Uh, so they need to be fitted to the existing headlight buckets. Obviously these are not in very great condition. So they're going to get stripped and powder coated black once we um, fit the headlights to the buckets. Uh, also a very good friend of mine uh, had no room in his garage and he gave me a sandblasting cabinet. This is going to be put to really good use. I can tell you I've got a whole lot of things that need to get blasted before they get powder coated. So I'd just like to thank Steve Morris for doing that for me. So, what have we got up for next week's projects? Well, um, I got a radiator in the week. So I need to fit this radiator to the front of the car, get it all bolted in. It's going to need a bit of modification, so it is quite big. Uh, the radiator is a 75mm thick, 3-core radiator for an RX-3. So well and truly overcalled for the Chevron and for a 5k Toyota motor but I think it's better to have too much than not enough and that's what thermostats are for to allow you to keep it running temperature also we've got the Jazz, jazz fuel cell and the fuel lines to start getting plumbed in and mocked up in the car I have to create a bracket tree to hold the fuel cell once I get that done that gets bolted into the car, I can start plumbing it in and getting the fuel line in. We've gone for, I want a lot of hard line in the car. I don't want old rubber line that uh, gets brittle over time. So I've bought a lot of hard line that's going to have to get plumbed in as well. Again, everything I do, I make sure that it is okay with the Bible here so that we can, when it comes to certification, pass easily okay thanks very much for watching if you like what you saw don't forget to click like and subscribe you have a good day thank you